Hey guys, it's Big Dave here for Tales of Talara, and it's Monday, so you know that means it's time for Warfronts. This week on Warfronts, surprise, it's my level 41 rogue. He is specced into Bard, and this is the Black Garden. But it's not just any Black Garden. Look at that beautiful red knight there in his stylish armor. Oh, we have a purple skirted lady joining the party. Very nice. Self-expression in Rift. Don't you just love it? I do. So we've got a very colorful, if not small, team for this Black Garden. Just five of us here, myself playing a support role, and a bunch of DPS. So this should be a pretty interesting match. This was my first match back after about two weeks off. Since the last episode of Warfronts, I guess it's been two weeks, and uh, I had a bit of a work thing, if you will. Some of you will know I work for an ISP, and that ISP was one of a few that offered service to the Democratic National Convention here in Charlotte, North Carolina. So that meant it was all hands on deck, and I picked up some extra shifts at work, which definitely kept me from doing any sort of gaming for uh, quite some time. So getting back into Rift here after a bit of an absence, I uh, had to take some time to catch up with the family, and now I am back in full force. You are seeing me here with my rogue barden around, trying to find something to hit, and uh, finally just settling in on this pet. I love hitting pets with Cadence. Uh, because they just kind of hang around. They hang around your target, and uh, you usually have good range to them. I can stay out of the range of his master while being in range to heal my, uh, my ally here. So I really enjoy uh, healing off of pets as a bard. It is one of those things that I try to keep a good eye on. So what you're going to notice here is I'm not keeping a good eye on the push. And uh, what I'm not going to notice until it's too late is that the rest of my team has kind of abandoned me. <laughs> And uh, I do end up biting it right there. Uh, one guy down and the rest of them uh, pushing out of my range. So I get the bulk of the enemy team on me. That is a, a problem of perception on my part. You notice that my camera angle was in a very bad place to see the rest of my team. 100% an error on my part. And that's the kind of thing that I want to remember that this show is for. It's for that sort of self-criticism. And, and that's something that I have been getting away with, uh, getting away from a little bit here and there, so trying to definitely get back into that. You're going to see me here deploying my, uh, my, <clears throat> excuse me, deploying all my power-ups, my, uh, what the hell are those things called? My motifs, and uh, getting everything going here. Trying to come in on the edge here, uh, trying to do a little bit of healing, realizing immediately that I am outmanned, and uh, seeking the line of sight breakage of some trees here. Ultimately, it's going to all be for naught, as I do end up getting uh, put away by a naked dwarf. Lovely. Always love that. Always love it. So finally, the enemy team engages the fang, and we are off and running here. This is a bit of an interesting game. It is, uh, it's going to get out of hand pretty quickly. I make some mistakes. Uh, my teammates make some mistakes. We're not together. We're not playing as a team. And the enemy team really, really just takes advantage of that. Also, Von Zipperstein... Amazing name. Von Zipperstein, a uh, pretty skilled player from what I can tell, had a couple of run-ins with him and he uh, he did a pretty big number on me. So uh, this game all in all, a bit parched there. Should have drank a little bit more water before this before this recording. I, I do apologize, I don't have time to retake this, so I'm just going to have a sip of water right here live during this commentary. Uh, H2O, what would I do without you? Von Zipperstein picking up the fang here and uh, kind of come together as a team a little bit. We, we do a rush, sort of almost a coordinated looking effort here as we move in to try to uh, down Von Zipperstein and we do indeed take him down. I was pretty proud of that. You know, I kind of kept and played my part there, kept to my uh, self, try to stay out of the way, uh, realizing here that the push is maybe getting a little bit away from me. I'm kind of trying to gauge where I should be. Am I still at a good place? Am I still at a good range? And uh, I'm pretty happy with where I am moving up and immediately realizing shouldn't have moved up. So uh, I start to retreat. Will I be able to get away? I'm not sure. Almost Killing. casting this at this point. Uh, and Narman around the tree. What is he doing here? Going into enemy territory. I don't believe it. Von Zipperstein not going to let that stand. And don't, he goes down. Sorry, that is my poor attempt at casting Rift. Uh, so we get the fang uh, for all of my distraction there. And that is something that I like to do. If I know I'm being focused, hell, just run to some weird place and make them follow you. And uh, that's kind of what I'm di I did. I'm not going to take credit for grabbing that fang, but uh, I will say that uh, I at least took one guy away from the battle. 
always targeting Von Zipperstein. Always targeting Von Zipperstein. Don't know why that is. Apparently, just my... my uh, he's always around me. My tab always goes to him when I tab target. So the, uh, the enemy team just presenting a great front here. I immediately realized that I need to get some line of sight protection. Uh, being the only... Uh, I was going to say the only dedicated healer, but it does appear that uh, our cleric did change over. So big props to the cleric for changing over there and uh, understanding that what we needed was some healing. I'm uh, going to go down here, just purely overextended myself, didn't get powered up before I actually uh, came out. Should have uh, given, given myself a little bit more time to get a little bit, bit more healing up. Um, you know, again, trying to look at this uh, for a second or third time and analyze exactly where I went wrong, where I went right. It's a little bit difficult at times. Uh, you know, how how could I have done that? Not really sure, because I don't have any direct self-healing. So I had to get out there to do damage and uh, in order to heal. And that is the, the sort of the conundrum that all bards will find themselves in sooner or later. Uh, I am a healer who heals through damage. And without that damage, I cannot heal. And because my cadence actually has a shorter range than most casted... Uh, casted spells, cast spells, casted spells, I actually have to put myself in uh, not only danger by, by moving up into enemy range, I have to put myself in harm's way by moving a, a few meters into enemy range. So it's it's actually a bit of an interesting challenge that, uh, that we bards do face. Oh, Fang dropped behind the tree now. Will anybody make the move? It appears not. We're keeping the uh, bulk of their team distracted here in the middle, not doing too badly. I'm just trying to concentrate on healing. Uh, my motifs are falling off. I should really be looking to recast those here any minute. Uh, any minute now, you want to... There we go. All right, he heard me, finally. <laughs> so you can see in that case, I cast my two most uh, vital motifs first. My motif that increases healing and my motif that uh, actually makes me radiate healing. So in a situation like that, I wasn't sure what I needed or uh, where the enemy was. So I cast the two mot motifs which I knew would be uh, actually useful in the moment. I'm trying to stay close to the fan carrier here, allowing my uh, healing motif to radiate out and bless her. Uh, but ultimately, uh, she is a healer herself, so not in a lot of danger. Uh, but we're just going to play it. We're just going to play it slow. Uh, we're going to let them come to us. I am trying to effectively use my adhesive bomb or whatever the hell it's called to slow them on the uh, on the run in. That seems to be going pretty well. Uh, eventually. Uh, Cran is going to go down, but, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter. We've established a pretty good foothold on the Fang at this point. Uh, so Von Zipperstein, again, Von Zipperstein, always, always there, always there. And uh, that's an important thing to be. I mean, just be in the in the face of the enemy. And I remember that player more than anyone else from the opposing team because they were always being a nuisance. And even though that was a poor push on his part, solo push uh, by himself and he was taken down, you know, he's still, he's harassing us. He's pushing forward, and he's trying to actually uh, win the game for his team. You can see me here sort of deliberating over where to drop my adhesive. There it is. Nice, just stops them right in their tracks, doing exactly what I want to do. We are in the center with the fang, racking up points. Oh, wait, not anymore. <laughs> so again, Von Zipperstein... Uh, making those smart pushes, again, I, I can't say it enough times, he's pushing around the edges, not running straight in, and uh, trying to just make an effective uh, an effective push and trying to, uh, to really put something out here. Uh, now, this is an interesting spot right here. I'm trying to put damage on him. Apparently, what I realized there is that Cadence doesn't actually stop Fang channeling. So, uh, yeah, lost that. That kind of sucked. Uh, but in the end, Von Zipperstein is going to be... Uh, just no match, no match for us as we uh, team up and our Red Knight is going to grab the Fang. We're going to move back and uh, we're going to continue on what is actually a pretty damn decent comeback. Really just can't believe it. Uh, this, this game kind of came together in a really unexpected way. Get out of the AoE, there you go. And uh, again, finding myself overextended. No, 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 slap on the wrist there. That was the sound of me slapping my wrist. I don't know if the mic cough that or not, but uh, struggling for life here, trying to pull out every trick I have. The thing that I probably should have done uh, was hit a riff and then hit my heel, but uh, in the end, Cran is there to uh, actually boost me up and save me. And again, just moving right back to the idea, to the strategy 
of actually just keeping them at bay, keeping them at a distance. You know, we are but five, they are but five, but we are going to claim this center and we are going to own it. And at this point, uh, they are organizing, they are grouping for an attack, whether they're actually chatting about that in, uh, in the chat or not. They are actively organizing up. Again, another good placement, in my opinion, on my uh, adhesive bomb. Really happy about that. Getting that down as part of my arsenal, especially when guys are coming in like that, has been something that I've been focusing on uh, off and on as I've been playing. Uh, again, another cl good clutch fan grab there from Cran. Again, I'm try trying to avoid not getting into casting this because that's not something that I'm skilled at. Uh, but, you know, just, again, a very nice uh, a very nice strategy here. Sticking to the middle, you know, it's myself and a healer along with our brilliant Red Knight uh, trying to do everything that we can to keep this fang alive and keep the uh, score tally going up, up, up. That's what we're doing, and we're going to take the victory here pretty easy. This was my first match back after about two weeks away, and I have to say, all in all, I'm pretty happy with my performance. That death right there was probably avoidable, but uh, I'm not going to be too hard on myself for that. So guys, thanks for joining me for another episode of Warfronts. I'm really enjoying myself in the world of Rift right now, uh, having a really great time, uh, you know, showing, showing myself showing myself how the game can be fun in small pockets. And I think that's something that Rift has done a really good job of. They've opened up these small pockets of fun, if you will, uh, that can really uh, bring the game out and, and, and get you to a place where you can be a casual player, as I have unfortunately become. I don't consider that a bad word, but some people will. And you can still enjoy yourself. I am right now concentrating on PvP with my bard, uh, with my rogue, occasionally playing him as a marksman, and also concentrating on leveling my cleric through instant adventures. So I can sit down, take 10, 15, 20 minutes for a series of instant adventures, and then go on about my way, or I can sit down and I can queue up and grab a quick... PvP session and go on about my way. I'm really happy with where I am with Rift right now. I'm not playing it as much as I want to be, and I know I talked in the previous episode about that, and I got some good comments on that, thanks to everybody who commented on that video. Uh, but I'm going to keep plugging away. Just stay subscribed to the channel. If you're subscribed to the channel, every now and then a Rift video is going to drop into your box. I may not be able to keep up the consistency of the weekly show anymore, just because, frankly, if I sit down and I don't get a good recording... I'm just not going to use it. I'm going to enjoy myself and play. If I have three hours to play to get a good recording and I just don't have something after the first hour, I'm probably just going to do PvE for the last two hours because I want to play this game. And, and I can appreciate those of you who understand that. And I appreciate everybody who continues to watch these videos. I'm just a guy. You know, I'm not a PvP expert, as these videos plainly show. And uh, I'm not a PvE expert. I'm not a guy on the cutting edge of raiding who's going to give you strategies. I'm just a dude, an average player who plays and puts out some videos that, uh, you know, a hundred people enjoy watching. Another good game session in the uh, books here, and I hope everybody has a nice day, night, evening. Stop talking, Dave. Stop talking. Thank you. All right. I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.